When people look at me for the first time, they often see me as a normal, functioning human. One of the past, a future, memories, a personality, the works. Admittedly, they may think that person's wearing sunglasses and has cool hair, but that's fine, that's good. It's when we get to know each other a little better that we run into some problems. We don't think along the same lines, act the same way. Neurodiversity. Now, I've been told that some of you don't know what this word means. And even if you do know, it's best to have a refresher before we start. Neurodiversity is, well, the diversity of minds. This means that you and I are not the same, that we do not think the same. The word neurodiversity is currently used as a way of saying they have a mental disability of some sort. Uh, dyslexia, autism, schizophrenia, things like that. Now, me saying those words, it didn't exactly spark joy, did it? Those words, autism, schizophrenia, they made you feel a little weird, yeah? Ag, you think to yourself, bad. You shy away from it. Try best not to think about it. To summarize, I'm here today to talk to you about neurodiversity, why it's important, and what we as a culture can do to better accommodate it. First off, credentials. I'll be honest here, I don't have a PhD. <laughs> Just a heads up. I have, however, poured countless hours into personal published research regarding gender, autism, and neurodiversity. I have experienced things many of you will never come close to because of my disabilities. I have changed the way that hundreds of people think just by existing and talking. And finally, I have what countless other researchers don't, a lifetime's worth of experience in the subject I'm about to discuss. So let's get started with the first topic of this talk with a short story. Let's call our fictional person... Ugh, actually, let's not use a fictional person. Let's imagine that you have autism. To get in the mood for that, imagine that people think you're stupid. Really stupid. And despite being really quite fine, people also baby you. And sometimes, for no reason, you act like how people describe you and you can't stop it from happening and you're so sorry because you're so brilliant but you can't show it. And, and you begin to doubt yourself. Am I really brilliant or am I just deluding myself? Are they right to think that I have no future, that I'm a burden, that I'm a worthless failure? There you go. Best rundown I can give you for the time I have. So yeah, let's say that you have autism, and let's imagine you're applying for a job. A um, banker, I suppose. If you were to apply for this job and put down your neurological problems on your resume, suddenly your chances of getting that job have plummeted so far and so fast they crashed to the floor and went off to orbit Jupiter. <laughs> no matter what kind of experience you have, you're far, far less likely to get the job. No, not even an interview just because of who you are. Now, let's say you hadn't done that. You get the interview, and you don't make a ton of eye contact with a potential employer. Now, quick background on that. It's uncomfortable. It makes it hard to think for some reason or another. It isn't fun. Unfortunately, I've been reliably told that people tend to see a lack of eye contact as shifty and such things. Quite hurtful, really, but anyway, back to the story. You don't get the job. Now, as you may have guessed, this is a problem. It affects, well, not you, but this affects thousands of people across the globe every day, and a lot of companies are doing nothing to fix this, despite the frequent expertise in the field we're trying to get into. Some are doing something, but even their tolerance isn't found everywhere. Acceptance should be commonplace, but strangely, it isn't. 
If a potential employer sees a disability they don't like on your resume, regardless of how you act, you're far, far less likely to get the job than if you hadn't listed it at all. This is a massive problem. So how do we solve it? We're going to solve this problem right here, right now. But before we do that, I want to give you a metaphor for diversity. Pizza. Now, you're probably thinking, hang on, you said pizza? Now I'm hungry. How dare you, speaker? <laughs> and I swear I'll explain this. Promise. So, you can look elsewhere for my name, but the pizza thing will take some explaining. You see, there are many kinds of pizza in the world. You have pepperoni, sausage, cheese, I could go on. The problem is that when you introduce kinds of pizza that not everyone likes, people make assumptions based on your preferences. If I told you I liked pineapple pizza, would you call me a monster? The entirety of my life, all the goods and bads and all the things between, all shoved aside to make way for monster? Of course not. I'm standing up here talking to you about diversity and things. I, all of me, can't possibly be just one trait. And you'd be right in thinking that because I'm not a monster. I am not just one trait. But now, let's apply that metaphor to humans and neurodiversity. If you were to go on social media and say, hey, I have autism, what would be the response? I can't tell you for sure, but especially since it's online, a lot of negative emotions and assumptions would get thrown your way. There would be, depending on followers, channel subscribers, whatnot, there would be feedback. And people would then treat you differently. Not as in a good or a neutral differently, but a bad kind of differently. Best case scenario, followers don't say anything. Uncomfortable silence and all that. Worst case, you get hate from anonymous people encouraging you to commit suicide. Most likely scenario is that, however, your followers praise you for your writing abilities or how good you look. <laughs> Sorry, no, not writing abilities as in, wow, that sentence was so good. No, I mean writing abilities as in, wow, you can write? This may not seem all that bad at first, but once you take a closer look at it, or if you're on the receiving end of it, it feels gut-wrenchingly awful. If someone came up to you and said, hey, nice job getting dressed this morning, or hey, I didn't know you could read, that'd make you feel a little weird, yeah? Like they didn't expect you to be able to do that? That's the kind of feeling roughly one in 10 people in this room experience every day of their lives. My apologies for the negativity, but it's something that needs to be fixed, or at the very least, acknowledged. Remember earlier when I said, we're gonna solve this problem right here, right now? Well, my final point is this. It's time for us, as a culture, to change our perceptions of people and to alter our patterns of behavior to ultimately make a better world for us all. This will be the most difficult part of my talk because not only are we dealing with millions, billions of people, but we're talking about changing all of those people's mindsets. And not everyone wants that. So I've come up with a compromise. Think of it as an exercise, really. Something a therapist might suggest to do as homework to make your life and everyone else's a little bit better. I want you all, for one week, to not judge people. I know, I know, it sounds silly. Or maybe you're thinking, but Jay, I'm not judgmental, and I can guarantee you are. We all are, it's ingrained in us. <laughs> Heuristics, stereotypes, 
these things kept us alive when we had to deal with wolves and bears. That big hairy thing with sharp teeth, it's probably going to kill me regardless of the species. But nowadays, in regular society, without these dangers, we use these stereotypes to harm our fellow humans, intentionally or not. So, for the next week, anytime you have a thought about a person, I want you to catch yourself. I want you to catch yourself when you're thinking, that person has a stain on their shirt, it's ugly, or hey, hey, this person's acting really weird. I want you to let it fall away. Let it sit, then go. I want it to slip your mind, and I want you to pay no heed. This is going to be hard. Really hard, especially when, especially when you can come up with all sorts of convenient excuses for yourself for why you should judge them. Maybe they're dangerous. Maybe they're a criminal. And I want you to question those impulses. I want you, yes, you, and you, and you, and yes, even you, way in the back over there. I want you to smile at them. And I want you to know that not everyone is the same. I'm Jay Pierce, and it's been a pleasure. Have a good night.